Welcome to the 30th anniversary of Jazz at LACMA. We are proud to be back at the museum to present the John B. Williams Fiesta Quartet.
Thanks for joining us for our virtual Jazz at LACMA concerts as we celebrate our 30th anniversary of this great free jazz concert series. My name is Mitch Glickman, Director of Music Programs here at the museum. We can't wait to have you back for our concerts. But right now, we're being safe, so no audiences quite yet. But we are able to assemble some of the finest musicians in the world so we can keep this concert series going. Our concerts are made possible in part by a grant from the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs, and our broadcasts are supported by the County of Los Angeles Supervisor Sheila Kuehl. Promotional support comes from our friends on the radio, KJAZZ 88.1 FM, where every Sunday night, 7 p.m., you can hear the great Jazz at Lackman concert broadcasts. Now tonight, we are thrilled to have the legendary bassist John B. Williams. His historic career has lasted over five decades as part of such groups as Horace Silver, Hugh Masekela, Dizzy Gillespie, and Louis Armstrong, to name but a few. You might recognize John, he was the bassist for the Tonight Show Band and the Arsenio Hall Show Band. For 25 years, he was also part of the Nancy Wilson Trio. We are thrilled to kick off our 30th anniversary of Jazz at LACMA with the John B. Williams Fiesta Quartet.
That was a great composition by the great Wayne Shorter called Fall. He recorded that with the Miles Davis band. We'd like to continue now and uh, ask us, uh, ask uh, my dear friend, well, all of these guys are my dear friends. <laughs> uh, Kevin Tony has been a dear friend for a long time and remains a very, very close friend and a very accomplished musician, composer, producer, arranger, you name it, and Kevin can do it. On percussion, <clears throat> the one and only Manyongo Jackson, whose resume uh, is as long as this museum, <laughs> probably. He's an amazing uh, percussionist, drummer, musician, composer, also an arranger. <clears throat> an amazing musician, and I'm so thrilled that he's joined us for this wonderful, wonderful occasion. Yeah. On drums, the great Rayford Griffin. Rayford Griffin happens to also be the nephew, the nephew of the late Clifford Brown. Clifford Brown's talent <clears throat> and incredible talent has transcended to this young man right here. And he's an amazing percussionist. I don't just say drummer, I say percussionist because he's a musician. He's a percussionist and he's an amazing musician and I'm so thrilled to uh, share the stage with him. And I'm gonna ask him to uh, start us out with a little Calypso.
once again for Mr. Kevin Tony on piano, Rayford Griffin on drums, and Manyungo Jackson on percussion. Yours truly, John B. Williams. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed the music, and we look forward to performing for you sometime in the not too distant future again. Thank you. And thank you, Mitch Glickman, for all the wonderful work you're doing with LACMA. Thank you. So, John, here we are after yes. a year without any live music making. I know. Back at the museum. So great to see you and your band together. Oh, it's what great. has this year been like for you? This year has really been, it's, it's, uh, it's been good and bad. It's been good. I mean, of course, the bad part has been the closure of so much and so many people. We've lost so many lives to this terrible uh, pandemic. That's the, that's the terrible thing. Uh, I guess the only good thing is that I've had a chance to spend more time at home with the family. Other than that, uh, it's been difficult. I mean, it's been hard. I've had to learn how to play the bass all over again. <laughs> because I haven't, I mean, I've done, I think in a year, I've done maybe about five, maybe five or six performances. In and that's year, a lot. In the whole year. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's more than a lot of my friends that's, who have done like one or two. It's so strange. You know, so I guess I got to be thankful for that. So your career has been so filled with great diversity. I think of yeah. Horace Silver Band, Nancy yeah. Wilson for so many years. You were on the Tonight Show Band. You were on the Arsenio Hall Show Band. Yeah. I think if I'm right, you did the music for Sesame Street way back when. Yes, I did. I, uh, I started, Bob Crenshaw was doing that. As a matter of fact, uh, I owe Horace Silver and Bob Crenshaw a great deal for advancing my career. Uh, when I was working with Horace Silver and we played at a club in Brooklyn with the new band. The new band was back in 1968. 67 is when the new band, we started the new band with uh, Benny Maupin, Billy Cobham, Randy Brecker, wow. and yours truly. Not too shabby. And we, uh, we were performing at a club in Brooklyn and Bob Cranshaw came by to hear the new band. You know, at that time they were calling all of us the Young Lions. Who's the young? Who's the new group of Young Lions now, coming up? And Bob Cranshaw came to hear us perform, hear the new Horror Silver band, the new the new right. incarnation of Horror Silver's band. And he saw me going back and forth uh, from the electric bass to the acoustic bass. So. When we were playing at this club in Brooklyn, Bob Crenshaw came by and heard us and saw me going back and forth from acoustic to electric. And on the break, he approached me and he said, listen, you know, I have such a, I got such a heavy load of work, oh, such a heavy load of, of work. Uh, and he was like the second, the second busiest studio bass player in New York at that time. Easily, yeah. The first call, I think, was Richard Davis, then Bob Cranshaw. And so Bob said, listen, would you like to help me out? Because I really could use someone to sub for me when I to help, help me with some of this workload. I said, sure. I was, I was thrilled, too, that he asked me. So he says, yes, OK, great. He called me up a week later. And he said, listen, they're starting this new show, Children's Television Network. They're starting this brand new show called Sesame Street. And I've been doing the first week, but it's, they're, they're taping almost every day. I want you to come and help me. Wow. And so I want you to, the session is tomorrow, and I want you to just bring your bass, show up, play, do what you do, mm -hmm. play. And when they ask you what happened to me, you just tell them, listen, Bob called me at the last minute. He got stuck at the bank. <laughs> He was stuck at the bank. Well, I mean, there was a lot of truth to that. They didn't even question that because he made so much money in those days. Bob was stuck at the bank, so he called me at the last minute, please come and substitute for him. And so they said, okay, well, we'll, we'll you know, it was too late for them to do anything else. So they said, okay, let's check this kid out, see how it does. I played the session. At the end of the session, the guys liked what I did. They told me at the end, they said, listen, whenever Bob can't make it, make sure he calls you nice. to come in. And that was the start of my uh, 
studio work. That, yeah. All the work that I started doing in, in New York as a, as a studio bass player. And you've done so many recordings on so many different settings. Looking back, are there a couple of recordings that really stand out saying this one was really special? Yes. Louis Armstrong and being the first electric bass player to ever record an album with the Count Basie Orchestra. Oh, wow. The album was called Afrique. The Count Basie Band and I was called uh, because uh, I was doing so well with Sesame Street, the word started getting around. And so a couple of the contractors around New York, they liked what I was doing, and so I got called to do a lot of these sessions. And that was the biggest for me, that one, and to be able to play uh, for Louis Armstrong. Oliver Nelson uh, did the arrangements nice. for this Louis Armstrong album, and I think it was called Louis Armstrong and Friends. It was recorded back in May 1970, and it was, uh, it was just amazing for me to be able to play and sit, well, I'm right sitting there. right here, and Pops was about as close as you are yeah. then. And it was just amazing. I mean, I had uh, Grady Tate, who was a great, the great drummer, mm -hmm. was, still is, a great studio drummer in New York. He uh, told me, as I was nervous, I got to the session, and all of these great musicians were there. I mean, there was a whole string orchestra that uh, Oliver Nelson had assembled for this session. Yeah. They did two sessions. One session was all with strings, and the other session on the next on the next day was with brass. And so I was doing the string section. And one of the songs that we did on the string section that I did was "Wonderful World." Classic. And so that was really uh, one of the highlights of my career to be able to play That's with Louis great. Armstrong and play on that wonderful song, "Wonderful World." Yeah. And then Oliver Nelson asked me if I could. He said I liked. He liked my work for that session. He says, "I want you to come back tomorrow and do it." But I said at the same time I couldn't do it because. I was committed to Doc Severinsen. Whoops. Because at that time, I had just started doing The Tonight Show yeah. in New York with Doc Severinsen. And it was, I couldn't do it because I had to go out of town with Doc. So Louis, I mean Louis, Oliver Nelson says, listen, I understand, it's okay. You listen, we can't make them all. And I never forget those words because that's the one thing, how he had passed away, Oliver Nelson, because he was trying to do them all. He was doing so many. He was in such high demand uh, for doing movie scores and things like that. It was, yeah. and also I had a chance to uh, play next to uh, with the Basie band. I got a chance to to play uh, right next to uh, Freddie Green. That must have been fun. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. And Grady Tate was on that session. And I got to the session early so that I could look at the music and I want to learn. I got to learn. I want to, I want to make yep. a good impression. So I got there. I got to the session early and they had the music out. And I started looking at the music and just getting, making sure I played every single note right. Every note. I was determined to make a good impression. And so uh, Oliver Nelson was also the arranger and composer for that session and so they started to rehearse the uh, the song the first song so all of it counts off the song and I just dig in and I started playing every note I'm playing every single note perfect perfect <laughs> However. and just we, we, you know, maybe a couple of minutes into the song Oliver Nelson stops the orchestra he says wait 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 he said Basie uh, that's what he called me uh, Basie listen I know you can read, now, but can you play? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. And, and Grady Tate throws his drumsticks on the floor, gets everybody's attention, and he says, look what happened. Now, see, I tried to give this guy a break, and look what he does. He embarrasses me. Everybody broke up. Everybody started laughing. I mean, all of these great musicians were in there, and I just, I just could have crawled under <laughs> anything. 
But it was a lesson. It was a huge, huge lesson. And that's the one, I think the, one of the main things that I am so grateful about coming out here from New York is that I got, I sold my oats in New York. I learned in New York. I learned how to just say thank you when someone would pay me a compliment. There was a story that I wanted to write, a chapter I wrote, that I wanted to, I want to write in a, a book that I'm hopefully to finish that's all about saying thank you. Roland Hanna told me, or paid me a compliment when I was working with Grady Tate. Roland Hanna paid me a compliment by saying, you know, John, I really like the way you play. And what did I do? I just, oh, no, Roland, come on. I'm, <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. Grady Tate had a fit. He grabbed me, took me, out, took me outside, and said, what? I'm not even going to use the language that he used. <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> yeah. But he used, he used some choice words and really read, read, read me the riot act. He said, listen, what you just did, you just called. You know who this guy is? I said, yes. He said, who is it? I said, well, that's the great Roland Hanna. He said, Sir Roland Hanna. Sir Roland yeah. Hanna to you. <laughs> and he said, listen, what you just did was you called him a liar. You insulted him. He said, he doesn't have to even speak to you, much less pay you a compliment. Anybody like that pays you a compliment, you just, all you have to do is say, thank you. Two simple words. That's it. Just say, thank you. Don't go through all of that stuff, because that's <laughs> like you're fishing for more compliments. And that was a huge, huge lesson for me that I have, I pass that on today to everybody that I meet, young players that come along and I say, listen, thank you. Thank you, because if I tell you I like the way you play and you say no, then you're calling me a liar. You're saying that I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's an insult. Yeah. Well, things that, like that are the things that I'm, that I'm so grateful for coming out here from New York. Well, I think you leave me with two very important words that I need to share with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for opening our 30th anniversary of this oh. great concert series. Thank you for sharing and being your amazing self not just with the music, but in the community as well. You do so much that not everybody knows, helping all these different groups, musical and otherwise. Oh, so Mitch. we appreciate all that you do, and what a great way to kick off our 30th anniversary. So thank you, John. Well, Mitch, thank you for inviting me to come back uh, as many times as you've invited me here. And I admire you and the work that you're doing, and keep up the great work, and with the work that you're doing here. So many of us now have an opportunity to perform now in a great play. Those, those Friday night jazz series is, is the best thing going. And that's the best <laughs> thing going in, this, in L.A. Yeah. It is. And uh, it's always, always a pleasure for me to come here and perform. And uh, Well, the pleasure is you. ours. And we can't wait to invite you back to the museum. It'll be here soon. In the meantime, enjoy our virtual concerts, and we'll see you at our next one. Take care.